a star is about to go nova, a sunrise meteor shower peaks, and we take a look at a comet that could put on an incredible show for us later this year. Let's take a look at what you can go out and see in the night sky for June of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. We begin this June in the constellation Corona Borealis, where a star that is normally plus 10 magnitude, making it only visible through a telescope, is about to go nova when a thermonuclear reaction creates what appears to be a new star visible to the naked eye. The last time this occurred was in 1946, and the next projected nova should be sometime in 2024. You'll be able to see this new star in the northern crown with the naked eye for a few days and with a pair of binoculars for maybe a week or two before it becomes a dim telescope target again. I've got a separate video ready to go the moment this star goes nova with more information on how you can go out to see it from your own backyard. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it. Let's move from Corona Borealis to the best meteor showers this June. While there aren't any major meteor showers this month, we do have an interesting one in the form of the Oreotids. This sunrise or daytime meteor shower can be seen on the morning of June 7th, just before the sun rises. To see it, go outside about an hour and a half before sunrise and look towards the east. There you will find the constellation Aries, where the meteors appear to emanate from close to the horizon. On good years, this meteor shower can produce anywhere from 60 to 200 meteors per hour, but a good number of these will begin to be washed out as the light glow takes over from the rising sun. I've actually never attempted this meteor shower before, but might give it a try this year. It's a difficult one to see, but if you're already up, you might as well go out to see if you can catch a few meteors that morning. When it comes to the moon this month, let's begin with its phases, with the new moon on June 6th, first quarter moon on June 14th, full moon on June 21st, and a third quarter moon on June 28th. The moon makes several close passes to objects in the night sky, beginning with a pass by Mars on June 2nd, the star Spica on June 16th, and the star Antares on June 20th. The moon will also pass very close to Saturn on June 27th. You may have heard about the so-called Parade of Planets on June 3rd. There really isn't much to this at all, and I'm not quite sure where the hype for this story came from. Most of these planets will be so close to the rising sun that you won't even be able to see them. The reality is that sadly, like last month, there just isn't much going on with the planets, unless you want to get up really early to see Saturn in the southeast. But thankfully, July and August are when things start to get more interesting again for the planets, for those of you who enjoy observing and imaging these incredible targets. After months of tracking it in the northern and southern hemispheres, Comet 12P Pondsbrooks finally makes its closest approach to Earth on June 2nd. This has moved to a binocular and telescope target, but it's still a comet that people are taking incredible images of, many of which you can see over on cloudynights.com in their forums. It begins the month in Lepus, traveling through Canis Major, before ending the month in Puppus. Check it out with a pair of binoculars or a telescope if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, as we sadly say goodbye to this impressive comet that we've enjoyed seeing for the past several months. Our next comet is 13P Albers, which is a comet low to the horizon in the Northwest for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere. Your best bet to catch it is gonna be about an hour and a half after sunset. Starting the month in Auriga, it will end the month in Lynx, and you'll need a pair of binoculars or a telescope to spot this faint fuzzy blur as well. This month we begin tracking what could be one of the best comets of 2024, if it doesn't completely fall apart on its approach to the sun. You never know with comets. Comet C 2023 A3 Shushan Shan Atlas has been getting a lot of attention lately, but right now it is still a target that you'll need a telescope to see as it travels through the constellation Virgo. The hope is that this comet holds itself together 
and that by October, it could be a beautiful naked eye comet. We'll be sure to keep track of it over the coming months as it makes its closest approach to the Sun and Earth. As we leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space, it's important to remember for most objects in astronomy, but particularly for faint deep sky objects, you're going to want to get away from as much light pollution as you possibly can, and that does include the moon. This will help you whether you're using a pair of binoculars or a telescope to view these objects. I thought for June we would begin our exploration of the impressive globular clusters that are beginning to rise to good heights for observations. Let's go outside about an hour and a half after sunset and face towards the southwest. We'll begin by moving up from the Virgo cluster that we viewed last month until we come across one of the finest globular clusters in the night sky, M3. It's one I've recently viewed using a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars and my 12 inch Dobsonian telescope. Through a telescope or long exposure astrophotography, it really comes to life, revealing the fine details from the blurry, dense cloud of gravity holding these hundreds of thousands of stars together. Let's move back towards the southeast and work our way up to the constellation Ophiuchus, which is home to a fine collection of globulars. Scan this part of the sky with your binoculars and star hop over to M10 and M12, two of the brightest globulars in this constellation. Let's continue over to the constellation Hercules for our main event this June, M13, the Great Hercules Cluster. At a distance of roughly 25,000 light years, you're looking at over 100,000 stars densely packed together by gravity. I took this picture of the Hercules Cluster from my backyard using over one hour's worth of data, and this is one that I come back to every year to view and study. I go back and forth as to whether M3 or M13 is my favorite globular cluster, but either one will put on an incredible view for you with a pair of binoculars or a telescope. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're getting out to see and image in the night sky in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.